Chapter 1 His phone rang as he pulled up to the parking lot on his motorcycle. Drew Colburn Ramsley grabbed it and answered the call. Harley here. They're moving up the demolition, Miguel said. They're worried about protesters wanting to put it on some historical list or something, so they're trying to get it demolished before the protesters get organized and it becomes a media circus. I thought you should know. You're kidding. When? Drew kept his voice low. He didn't need anyone overhearing him, especially right now. Everything is all in place. They're coming to the party. The party is being cancelled. Two days from now, Party Central is going to be rubble. Miguel, this is not good. Drew scanned the parking lot. There was a truck there that he was unfamiliar with. It had a logo for the demolition company. Not good at all. You need to get the boss to get on this. The drugs, the players, they're all there or nearby. You don't hit them now. It's all going to be in the wind. We won't get this opportunity back. The boss feels there is enough time to do it right. Too risky, Miguel responded. He sighed. You should pull back a little. Pull back, Drew snorted. This is past my neck. Get the boss and tell him to get on this. Right now. I've got an uninvited guest to deal with. Who? Miguel asked, a little alarmed. Someone from the demo crew is here, Drew explained curtly. I'm hoping he hasn't stumbled onto anything important and I can get him out without any issues. Good luck, brother. Miguel didn't sound too confident. Call me if you need some backup. Get the boss on it, Drew replied. I'll try to convince him. They both knew it was a long shot. Drew ended the call and put the phone back in his pocket. He pulled on a hidden compartment in the Harley he was riding and retrieved his Glock. Putting the trusted gun in the back of his waistband, Drew replaced the compartment cover and casually walked over to the building. This was probably not going to go well. If he was lucky, the guy was already dead, or hadn't been in the building long enough to stumble on anyone and Drew would be able to get him out. If Drew was really unlucky, the guy was alive and had been found by members of this criminal gang. Then Drew would probably be witness to a murder. That was something his conscience wouldn't live with very well. The lock had been cut on the door. Drew pulled it open and went in. He listened and looked around each corner as he slowly approached the loading dock area of the condemned building. Luck was not with him. There was a man talking to three members of the gang, Red, Knuckles, and Sam. Look, guys, the city just sent me to make sure the building is clear. I don't want any trouble. Tomorrow, all the big equipment will be coming in, we'll be blocking off the street, and then early next morning we set the explosives and the whole thing comes down. You guys need to move out. He had obviously seen the bricks of heroin sitting on the pallets. Drew would give the guy guts for trying to talk his way out of a no-win situation. Sam spotted Drew. Hey, you should get a load of this guy, Harley. Drew walked up casually to the group. Who is this? I thought there were no other players in this operation. The demolition guy looked at him, and Drew nearly broke stride in surprise. Max Ramsley. He couldn't believe it. Max Ramsley had stumbled on this drug operation. What were the odds? You ever seen this guy before? Knuckles asked, motioning to Max. Sure, Drew said grimly. Every morning in the mirror except he ain't got the scar in the tats. Max and Drew looked startlingly alike. Drew's hair was shorter. He weighed maybe twenty pounds less, had black tattoos running up his arms and a scar through his eyebrow. Otherwise, they could be twins. I've always heard everyone has a doppelganger, but I'd never thought I'd meet mine. Max stared in fascination. We gotta get rid of him, Red commented. Whoa! Max threw up his hands in surrender. I'm just doing my job. I got a wife and kids at home. I would like to go back to them tonight. Shame we're going to have to make her a widow. Drew pulled out his gun. He decided to take the initiative before one of the others did. Maybe there was a way he could salvage this situation and get Max out alive. Turn around. Please don't do this. The charm was gone, replaced by fear. Turn around, nice and slow, Drew repeated. Sam, I'm going to need your car. Why? Sam was surprised by the request. 
Drew pressed the Glock into the base of Max's head. He laid a hand on his shoulder firmly. He hoped the guy wouldn't try to be heroic. Drew really didn't want to have to hurt him. We can't leave him out back to be found, and it's not like I'm going to put his body on the Harley and drive it all around town. Sam grimaced. You know blood's hard to get out of the carpet in the trunk. I'll use a tarp. I think there was even one outside, Drew improvised. I got a better idea. He must have come in a car or something. Why not use his? Sam asked. You got keys, demo dude? Max answered cautiously. I have keys. There's a truck outside. Really, though, I can pretend that I didn't see anything. You guys move everything out by end of day to day, and we can say this whole meeting never happened. We'll use your truck, Drew said. Start walking. You need any help with him? Knuckles asked. Nah, I got this. Drew pushed the gun hard into Max's shoulder, making him stumble forward. I think I'll join you. You're going to need help putting him in that truck, Red invited himself. Drew wished he wouldn't come, but it wasn't like he could refuse Red's help without making it look suspicious. Keep walking. Drew kept up the pressure on Max. Look, there's no reason for anyone to go to prison over this. You really don't want to be up on murder charges, do you? Max asked, rattled. Been to prison? Not a big deal, Drew replied. He kept his voice casual and calm. Drew hoped it would keep Max calm as well. He hoped Max wouldn't try to fight or run. If he did, then Drew would have no choice but to shoot him. He would try to make sure it wasn't a lethal shot, but at this close of range, if he missed, Drew would look stupid to Red. Drew needed to maintain his cover. Open the door. Max slowly complied, trying to buy time. We look so much alike. Funny, right? I mean, I could be your cousin or something. You wouldn't want to kill your cousin now, would you? Fine by me. Drew poked him again. Keep walking. They're in the side parking lot. There was a grassy area that was tucked behind the buildings. Hopefully no one would see them as they walked towards it. Have you heard of Ramsley Pharmaceuticals or Ramsley Insurance? Big business. My family owns them. They are rich. You could ransom me, Max threw out the idea. I would be worth a lot of money. We're in the drug business, Drew said dryly. What's sitting in the basement of this building is worth more than you. Look, I have my cell in my pocket. I'd like to record a last message from my wife and sons, Max pleaded. I promise I'm not trying anything. I just want to let them know how much I love them. As if I believe you wouldn't try something. Please, don't try anything, Drew thought a little desperately. Please, I'd just like to leave a message for my wife, Max persisted. He was starting to panic a little at the thought he might not make it out of this alive. Surely you can understand that. Just shut up, Drew hissed. They were at the grass. There was a puddle and a muddy area. It would have to do. He looked back to see Red standing near the building, having a smoke. He stepped in close to Max and could feel the man's muscles tighten. Don't do anything stupid if you want to stay alive. Max stilled, listening intently. I'm going to shoot the gun. You stiffen, you fall down in the mud. Roll over once so that you're wet on both sides. Hopefully, you'll be so dirty, Red will never know there's no blood or bullet hole. You don't move, you don't twitch, you don't so much as breathe when we roll you up in that tarp over there. Stay relaxed, not stiff. You go stiff, you give the game away. After we load you in the truck, Red goes to help the boys pack up. If not, I'll try to convince him of a decent place to dump you where you won't die. After that, you're on your own. Why are you doing this? Max whispered. Not that I'm not grateful. Just do him already! Red shouted from beside the building as he started to walk their way. I'm giving him his last rites! Drew yelled back. My ma raised me Catholic. They could hear Red curse, and suddenly there was a gunshot. Max stiffened in surprised terror, but didn't feel any pain. Fall, you idiot! Drew hissed in desperation. Max fell face forward into the mud. He rolled over onto his back. He jumped in surprise as another gunshot went off, but played dead, not even opening an eye. His very life depended on it. Why'd you have to put him in the mud like that? I'm gonna get all dirty. You could have done him on the pavement. 
Red said in disgust as he walked up. And have blood for the cops to go find when the wife calls that he's missing? Drew snorted. Get the tarp already. They rolled Max up in the tarp, tying it with some bungee cords that they found in the truck. Red took the legs, and Drew grunted as they heaved Max into the back. I'm going to help the guys pack up. Looks like we got to move fast, Red observed. Any idea where to? Drew asked. Red shook his head. Sam will figure it out. I'm going to dump him and burn the truck, Drew said, flipping the keys. He watched Red head for the building, then quickly started the truck driving out of the parking lot. Drew grabbed his cell phone and called Miguel. Hello, brother, Miguel said as he picked up the call. Three of them are packing up the goods right now. Sam, Red, and Knuckles. I don't know if the rest are going to come early and help or if that's all we can get. Drew turned a corner and tried not to speed too much. He didn't need to get pulled over with a body all wrapped up in the back of his truck. The boss needs to move on this. Where are you? Miguel asked. I'm coming to the station. I figured if you can't convince him, then I'm going to have to come in and talk to him, Drew explained. I saw at least twelve pallets in there. We've got to get that off the street. Anybody sees you come in and your cover is blown, Harley, Miguel used his undercover name. When Max Ramsley doesn't show up dead, my cover will be blown anyways, Drew said as he pulled him around a little old lady doing two miles an hour. Who? The demolition guy that crashed the party. Drew finally came into the parking lot. Come outside. I brought a present. He found a spot and turned off the truck. It was a nice truck, but not new or too fancy. He wondered why Maxwell Ramsley was working for a demolition company and not in the family business. Drew got out, slammed the door shut, and waited for Miguel to come out. It took a few moments for Miguel to find him. Boss is not going to be happy. I'm not happy. Drew popped the tailgate open and began to undo the bungee cords. Did you just bring us a dead body? Miguel demanded. Nope, he's alive. He's the demolition guy I was talking about, Drew explained. Sure enough, once the cords were loosened, Max helped them to remove the tarp and sat on the tailgate of the truck. Max took a look at the sunny sky, breathed a deep breath, and smiled. It feels good to be alive. Miguel looked at the muddy Max and then Drew. You got a brother you didn't tell me about? Drew looked grimly at Max. I got three. You're kidding. Miguel did a double take, looking at Max again. Drew motioned to Max. Nope. Jana never said anything. Miguel looked at Max. Yeah, well, I might not have told her. Drew walked away, heading for the police station entry. Hey, would you like to explain that? You're a cop, aren't you? Undercover? Max followed like an eager puppy. Man, I would like to thank you for saving my life. You're welcome, Drew said tersely, wishing he would just go away. I just lost a serious bust because of you. What do you mean you never told Jana? Miguel asked as he followed. She is going to be really angry. Could you imagine telling her that our father couldn't be bothered to marry our wacko mother because he had a legitimate family, a wife and three kids? Drew laughed without any humor. You tell her. Whoa, not me. Miguel held out his hands in surrender. He knew just how well Jana enjoyed surprises, which meant she didn't enjoy them at all. What are you guys talking about? Max questioned as he matched their strides. Your dad was married already? I don't understand what this has to do with anything. Are you going to go after those guys at the building? Drew stopped and put a hand on Max's shoulder. You should go home, rich boy. Hug that wife of yours and your kids. Let us handle this. Miguel looked at both of them with some fascination. They looked so much alike. He doesn't know. How can he not know? Know what? Max asked, looking from one man to the next. Drew blew out a frustrated breath. Miguel, if you leave it alone, maybe it will go away. Look at you two, Miguel motioned at them. I don't think this is going anywhere. Besides, you should probably take his statement. He is a witness. What? Max insisted. He didn't like that they kept talking in circles around him. What are you talking about? What's not going anywhere? Dude, he's your brother from another mother, Miguel enlightened Max. Max looked at Drew in surprise. No. 
Drew shook his head in disgust. David Michael Ramsley, father of the year. No, Max repeated. He didn't. He did. Congratulations, Maxwell. You've got two half-brothers and a half-sister. Drew turned his back on him and marched into the police station. Max looked on in some confusion. Miguel put out a hand. I guess that makes me your half-brother-in-law. Welcome to the family. Serious? Max automatically shook Miguel's hand. I mean, we look a lot alike, but I'm not sure my dad. That would mean he had an affair. I hate to be the one to break it to you, Miguel said. That's exactly what your old man did. Max shook his head and looked at Miguel in amazement. Wow. Yeah, wow. Miguel repeated with some amusement. We should go inside. Sure. Max let Miguel lead him into the station. You're married to... Jana. We've got three kids, Miguel said proudly. She's on maternity leave right now, but she's a cop as well. Really? Max looked at Miguel in surprise. Three cops in the family. That's cool. You got kids? Miguel asked. Yeah, two boys. Max grinned. Morgan and Ryder. I've got two brothers, Noah and Michael. I guess that means you've got two more brothers-in-law and more nieces and nephews since they both have kids. Family just doubled, Miguel said with interest. It did not just double because they are not family. Drew waited impatiently for them. And because the old man decided to have an affair on your mom doesn't make us family. Don't mind him, Miguel said. He's got issues. I've noticed, Max agreed readily. Colburn, a voice said sharply as a man walked by. In my office. Great, Drew muttered. He gave Max a sharp look. You're one of my issues, so you get to come and meet the boss. Okay. Max was cool with that. He really wanted to know more about his brother and what Drew did. Max followed Drew into the office. Meet Captain Oswald Green, otherwise known as the boss, Drew said. Boss, this is Maxwell Ramsley, the guy who caked my cover. Sit down, Green scowled at them and pointed to the chair as across from his desk. Miguel comes to me with some story about a demo guy walking in on your territory and that you want to move on the building right away. It's probably too late to move now, Drew sighed as he took a seat. Everyone will be leaving you might be able to catch the boys in the act, but there's only three at the building right now. Sam, Knuckles, and Red are there. The other players aren't. Do you think they'll let you know when they're going to ship the stuff? Green asked. Drew snorted. I'm not that big of a fish. I asked. Red told me Sam would figure it out. It means that no one knows yet. Besides, my cover is going to be blown by tomorrow or the next day at the latest. How do you figure? Green popped a piece of chewing gum. He was trying to kick the smoking habit. The whole thing made him irritable, which meant he was harder than usual on the team. He didn't like it when things didn't go to plan, so he glared at Drew now. Drew jerked a finger at Max. When he doesn't show up missing or dead, the guys are going to wonder why. I take your twin here is the demo guy. Green frowned even more if that were possible. That's me, Max smiled unrepentantly. Very glad to be alive. If it weren't for... I'm sorry I didn't quite catch your name in all the excitement. Andrew Colburn. Call me Drew. He left off the Ramsley that was attached to the back of his name. Drew didn't like using it. Other than DNA, he wasn't attached to the Ramsleys at all. Right, Max continued. If it wasn't for Drew, I would be dead today. I owe him my life. That's nice, Green said dryly. So what are we going to do about this? I can't launch an operation on this group on this short amount of time. I need details. That means I need you back under cover, Colburn. I know it, but one of them is going to look up Max and wonder why there's no outcry when I supposedly dumped his body. Drew sighed in frustration. They'll get suspicious. Red doesn't particularly like me as it is. Millions of people go missing every day and only a percentage of them hits the news, Green shrugged. Who cares if he goes missing? The entire media circus? Drew enlightened his boss. He's a Ramsley? Think money, power, and fame. We're not quite that bad, Max tried to downplay it. You guys make the tabloids on a regular basis, Drew said in disgust. He knew it because every time they did, people mistook Drew for Max and asked him all sorts of annoying questions. 
not always in the most flattering light. Max sighed. Sometimes things get blown out of proportion. Green nodded, thinking of the big picture. What if he were to go missing? What if they found his body in a few days? Excuse me? Max looked at the two of them in surprise. What are we talking about? I can get the press involved, put out a missing persons alert, keep him in custody, and release a few details to stir the pot and keep your cover intact, Green said shrewdly. If you contact the Barracuda, she'd love it. Drew raised an eyebrow as he mentioned a notorious tabloid writer by her nickname. She covers the Ramsleys all the time. You would have to give her an exclusive afterward. Green shuddered. If I have to. I'd rather not be in the press, Max interrupted the two men. They don't have a habit of always telling the truth. Look, Mr. Ramsley, Green gave Max his full attention. You would be doing us a great service if you would cooperate with us in this investigation. I'd like to leak it to the press that you are a missing person. We'll have to get your wife to file a report. We'll have a press conference, find the truck abandoned, whatever. In the meanwhile, you'll remain out of sight until we can wrap up our operation on this group of criminals. It shouldn't take long. How long? Max wondered. Maybe a week or two, Green said. Drew privately wondered exactly how long it might be. Green's estimate was optimistic. Until we can arrest the leaders of this crew and find out more about who is supplying the heroin. You would have no contact with anyone. Be like a mini vacation away from work, family, friends. Green shrugged. You'd sit around and watch television all day. Or read. Whichever you fancy. What about my wife? Max frowned. What about her? Green asked. Most people like a vacation from the missus. She would know where I am, right? Max looked a little concerned. She needs to know the whole deal, and I'd have to be able to phone her each day. Generally, that wouldn't happen, Green responded. We need her reaction to be genuine. Then I can't do it. Max shook his head and folded his arms stubbornly. I'm already on two strikes with her for admitting things when I first met her. I promised to tell her the truth up front, and I am not going to break that promise. I won't lose her. Great. He was ruled by the wife, Drew thought darkly. Is she any good at lying? Can she act? Green asked. Otherwise, we'll just have to say she's too upset to go in front of the press. You have any other relatives who might be able to read a statement to the press? I have two brothers and their families. Max frowned. I suppose you wouldn't let them know about it. Nope, Green said firmly. If we let your wife in on it, that will be enough. If you have any kids, they can't know that you're not missing. I'd hate for this entire operation to go bust just because Timmy lets something slip at daycare. Fine. Only Paget will know, Max responded. He didn't like keeping his family in the dark about this, but he also wanted these guys caught. It wouldn't be right to just let these men walk free when they could be behind bars if Max cooperated with the police. How do we do this? Is there anything that I can do that will help the investigation? Stay out of the way, stay bored, and keep your wife from spilling the beans, Drew stated dryly. He nodded to Green while pointing a finger at Max. Where are you going to house our co-conspirator? I figure he can board with you, Green smiled a little maliciously. It looks like you, and if any of your neighbors see him, they'll just think it is you. Drew wasn't amused. He really wished the commanding officer would go back to smoking. He was a lot easier to deal with and didn't come up with ideas like making Max Drew's new roommate. And when I'm gone and working, who looks after him? I'll put the rookie on babysitting duty. Green leaned back. It'll help polish his skills. Drew sighed. Great. It's just for a few days, Green assured them both. There was no real way to tell just exactly how long this would really be for, but he wasn't about to let Max know that now he had the man's cooperation. Colburn, you'd better get back out there and find out where those drugs are going and who the supplier is. Once we know what the next drop is, we can move. Yes, sir. Drew got up and would have left except the boss stopped him. He'll need a key to your apartment, Green said. Miguel has one, Drew responded before he left. He would have to get a cab to go back to the building to see if Red and the gang had gotten everything cleaned up. If they had, Drew hoped that they would contact him. As a newer member of their gang, he had no way of getting hold of them. It was a simple security measure they used. It was also effective. 
If they dropped him now, Drew would have no means of contacting them or finding out what they were up to. Drew grabbed a tarp out of the supply closet to throw over Max's truck. He didn't want anyone to see it sitting in the police lot. He would drive in further to the impound area, cover it, and give Miguel the keys before going back to the abandoned building. Drew sure hoped Max and his wife would make this work. If she wasn't convincing, if something slipped out and everyone learned that Max Ramsley was alive, it was Drew's life on the line. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this chapter, please look for the next chapter of Love and Lies. Also, please subscribe to the channel to enjoy other audiobooks, helpful videos, and insights into writing. This is free for you and would really help me grow my audience with the algorithms. Thank you.